My name is Enrique Iglesias. I come from the Universidad Simón Bolívar in Caracas. And today I will discuss my best comparison in the frame of the curators, my weekly curators meeting of December 15, 2021. My um, comparisons are centered around the area of plasma physics. Uh, plasmas are commonly known as the four state of matter in comparison to the other three states, solid, liquid, and gases. It characterizes itself because it covers many, many orders of magnitude in density of particles and also in the temperature of the particles itself. So that, uh, for the physics point of view, that explains very well the fact that plasmas are shown in nature and in the laboratory in very different fashions. Of this, of these different ways that the plasma manifests itself, we we'll, we will study. Well, what happened here? I kind of. Okay, we will study the so-called cold plasmas that are low density and low temperature, and also we will study or we'll work on strata information for our comparisons in laser produced plasmas which is a higher density, higher temperature. And this is binded together by the process called plasma spectroscopy that can be used in any of these type of plasma to make a measure. So within the RKG, uh, this uh, comparison fields uh, pretty well in three different fields, applied physics, plasma ambient physics, optics, quantum optics, atom molecules, and plasmas, depending on how is the main line on, in the comparison. And along this um, equation time, I uh, work in different comparisons in these three fields that uh, compile approximately 180 papers. The information of these 180 papers and somehow contain it in these comparisons in these fields. Okay, so I'll start with the graph view of the comparison that I will discuss for you today. Graph view is an environment that is provided by the ORKG. I call this comparison a layer comparison because uh, you can travel uh, through it uh, from a more, a, a more general quality approach to a more specific quality approach until you get to your entry point where you can enter your data in different type of formats. So it can be a literal, it can be a number, it can be a universal resource. There is a connection between the, uh, the first layer of the comparison and the entry point, and it, it's through a very unique uh, uh, path uh, that takes you from, uh, from subjects through attributes, which is an RKG language we call it usually property, to an object, and so on and so forth until you get to your entry point. Uh, explicitly, uh, this uh, and in particular this one, uh, uh, this path that I showed you in the figure, is, uh, is this path down here. So uh, I, I try to differentiate uh, the main characteristics of this path. Part of the path is dedicated to the property. Part of the path is dedicated to the instances of classes or so-called resources. So. For example, the, the, the path that I showed you just a moment ago, uh, go from uh, system qualities, uh, go to a, a resource, to a, another quality, which is a property, to a plasma type, and so on and so forth, until you get to the entry point, which in this case, it was a literal, but it could be also the types of entry points that is pointed out right here. So, to travel along these layers, the structure basically repeats itself a different, a, a, a very simple, a, a, a very simple, let's call it a simple structure that recycles itself, that goes from uh, a quality, instead of a, a, a quality class, that I just called quality a moment ago, and from any of these uh, qualities, you can travel to two different paths. You can further go down and put a quality that is more specific, or you can go to a plasma measurement a resource that can allow you to entry to enter your data. Uh, 
when you are actually doing this and preparing this uh, in, in practice, then the ORCG provides you a template tool. And here you can see a very a really large similarity between this template that it facilitates you uh, the way you can upload the data into the RPG. And you see here how the, this so-called uh, template and, and this this is uh, it, it provides you two ways: a quality, and it provides you a measurement, and both these uh, two. The two properties lead you to, as you see here, to a quality instance, and this measurement it, it takes you to a plasma instance that where your data will be uploaded. So you repeat several times this um, this uh, uh, this procedure using in practice the this template. Then then you can build the uh, different branches of this comparison that goes along. The different unique pathways until you get to, to the data upload point. So, to show you a little bit more, just only for the sake of information, the comparison today is, will be is called the development of laboratory X ray laser. It, it has uh, 14 papers, as I will show you later. And, and here you can see the name, the actual quality names. You can say here atomic spectroscopy and plasma. This is very, very general. They are farther subdivided in qualities that are more specific as you go farther down. And then in some of these layers, you will find, uh, as is indicated here, and you have entry points for your data. This is just a diagram to more or less show you on uh, how there is uh, the actual uh, properties in physics properties that we use here. So in the actual comparison, I just want to show you because this is a comparison that has some 22 uh, different resources. Uh, in the actual comparison, then the layer zero is on the top. As you go down the layers, you go farther down in the comparison. Um, uh, you will see, for example, points like this, where you have a resource like game or instead of a class game. Yeah. And then uh, the class quality, and then here you have the actual information related to this uh, quality gain. And where you see, as I showed you before, uh, you will see a, a, a literal that it specifies in this case the initiation state, a universal unit, and a value that will be also applied to other to other uh, qualities of this. So. Let's go directly to the actual comparison. And um, here I can show you on the left side the path that we discussed before that connects you uniquely to your data. Uh, here, if, we, you can, if you click on this, uh, you will see more details of, for example, this uh, resource ionization state, and you even could find yourself the definition of it. Um, as I said, this is, has a 14, uh, oops, uh, 14 papers here. Uh, I'm having, okay, 14 papers here. And then you can see the trends. These papers in particular are organized by date. And you, can, you will be able to see the trends of the different quantities that you could travel along all these uh, 14 publications. So going back to our presentation, uh, uh, I just want to make some final comments. Uh, one is uh, I try to answer myself the question what the user can discover in this comparison. And then as you see, there will be a specific comparative values with units and literal descriptor accord across 14 papers. If you relate this comparison to other companion comparison in this same specific problem, then you will be able to see the information extracted from 65 publications, and it will give you a very good feeling of the relevant physics that drove the evolution of this field. Uh, I can say many things about what I learned as a curator, but let's put it in relation to this comparison, formulate and skip 
for sorting, expressing, and comparing information for large amounts of comparisons or publications, excuse me. Recommendation, increase the capabilities with the comparison front end in the particular case of comparisons where the structure is repetitive uh, all, along the, all along the papers, uh, it will be recommended uh, on this, uh, that they somehow the interface will help you to re uh, recycle the structure and uh, automatically differentiate the different RIDs of each one of the instances of the class. Uh, the future work, uh, a friendly and more efficient method of loading large amount of papers with complex repetitive structure and update all my comparisons of this creating period to this uh, final best version of the comparison that we discussed today. Thank you to Kate Dean for his uh, collaboration all along this period of learning. And thank you for you to you all for your attention. And sorry that I passed one minute of the established time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Enrique, for this wonderfully structured uh, presentation. Are there any questions from the audience? So, so I would have a question, um, Enrique. How <clears throat> how was your workflow for adding contents to the ORKG? Did you have a, a, an always a specific procedure how you were approaching it? Yes, I, I uh, uh, with time. Okay, okay. At the beginning of the period, uh, I used the. The possibilities of the RKG to upload in CVS files of Excel, but those didn't provide structure that I, I'll show you today. Uh, but still, uh, having a having a an application like Excel, for example, to collecting all the information, that's something that I used all the time. So I will first uh, read all these papers. I had to go to the text, but I knew what I was looking for. Uh, and and then I uh, well of course first I I will have to put in my mind the structure of what I wanted to do. Now I think I have one that I can apply to many many times, which makes me very happy. So I will read the papers, and then I will collect this into an Excel sheet. That's I should say that is always uh, I did that, and and then I had that Excel sheet accomplished. That's when I went and use all the ORKG tools to upload the data. But I first always have an Excel sheet. For every comparison I have, I have an Excel sheet with all the information. I see. Have you a suggestion what um, could replace this Excel sheet? Uh, which tool should we invent to replace that Excel sheet? Well, it, it, Yes, I think I have a comment in this respect. It, it, it will depend very much uh, how you extract your information. If you recall in our first meeting, uh, for example, the examples that were shown, it seems that a lot of the information could be collected in the abstract of the paper. But I should tell you that that was not my case. I really had to go into the paper. So if the information could be in the abstract, only, you know, I guess a lot in the future of the evolution, the OKG, uh, maybe you decide so. Uh, then maybe you can create a tool that somehow, I had no idea you are the experts on this, that somehow can easily collect information there. But it's it won't be easy, I would think. But if the information is inside the paper, I, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I really had to go through it. Of course, uh, I, I could identify in a paper the, the, the paragraphs that I, 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 I had no information for it because I was looking for numbers, for example. So I will go straight to where these numbers were. So maybe there is a hint there of what can be done. So I will not read every single letter uh, of what is in the paper So because I knew what I was looking for. But, uh, sure. but this information comes in many, many different formats and tables. Uh, 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 it's, it's, I don't know. 
you are the experts. I don't know. What but if everything is in the abstract, maybe maybe it could be a tool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? That's not the case. Then thank you, Enrique, for this presentation.